Uh, welcome, uh, we are starting another module uh, today. Today's topic is heritage conservation, need, debate and purpose. So, um, as we see that in this image, uh, we are able to see a, a temple. Uh, this is in the West Mednapur in a village temple, it is a family temple. Beautiful uh, stucco works are there, but it is uh, in a very, very uh, deteriorated condition. Uh, there is not much economic affordability of the family to maintain it. It is not a listed property, that means it is not under state or cultural or the uh, heritage commission, neither it is under archaeological survey of India, so nobody protects it. We feel that this needed to be preserved, but there are many such structures which are very important, aesthetically beautiful, historically important, but they are just uh, getting deteriorated due to negligence, due to lack of finance and others and there are numerous of them. So, now the question comes that first of all do we preserve that because uh, these are not uh, very useful maybe in today's context if we see that um, family temples, they are not maintaining it properly. So, the question comes why do we preserve the built heritage and what should we conserve? Which ones? Uh, those which are very important people think or the community think or something like that. And if at all we can establish that these are useful, these are important, these are significant, then the questions come how do we conserve them? So, there is a debate and about the purpose, about the usefulness, about the way the heritage structures uh, are to be preserved. We will uh, discuss some of the uh, case studies today or some of the very well known examples to see uh, these, uh, why this debate happens and what are the answers if there are any. This uh, image what you see is the historic center of Warsaw in Poland. This is an outstanding example of a near total reconstruction, it is a reconstruction and uh, this reconstruction means something. Apparently one may think that it is a historical structures which are very old, but in reality it is not so. because. Uh, in August 1944, during the Second World War time, more than 85 percent of Warsaw's historic center was destroyed by Nazi troops of Germany and this that was the state. After the war, the government of that country and the people, they decided to reconstruct it and a five year meticulous restoration of the old town took place. The pictures what you will see is uh, on the uh, one side we see the this market square which was before the war and then we also see the damage condition what happened during the war. And we also see the satellite images or the aerial views of these two areas before the war in 1935 and after the war in 1947. After the war in 1947, we see that this place, the two, which was a market square, is a totally devastated and nothing almost remains in the place where this palace was there. This is the aerial view after reconstruction in 1990 t. So, it was not a restoration or reconstruction of one single structure or few structure is a total area where the 85 percent demolition took place was reconstructed. The aerial photographs which were available, they were very useful for this reconstruction purpose. This is the market square after today as it existing marketplace with the old houses and 
then this is the royal castle. Nothing almost existed and it is the last one which was reconstructed. So this is not actually the old fabric which was there before the war. It is a total reconstruction. The reconstruction which happened almost picture perfect. Everything was done authentically, uh, taking clues, taking dimensions, taking images from the old structures and the entire area were revived. Now what is happening to these structures which were earlier residential quarter of the old historic structure? They are now very important tourist place. There is a market square. Uh, most of the tourists visit throughout the year. A lot of activities happen in the market square. But actually, these buildings are no longer, not predominantly, the residential quarter. They are now being converted into a museum. Most of that, that entire facade, entire street, the buildings along that, they are a museum. Within the museum, they show what were the damage, how the reconstruction took place uh, and the history of that area. So this is what is happening in the museum. So that buildings which were reconstructed almost uh, exactly how they were before the war uh, are being used as a museum. So they have been rehabilitated and now this is being declared as a heritage site which is a world heritage site that means it is very very significant uh, when we talk about the international scenario or the global scenario. One might question that if nothing existed and if they are reconstructed so they are not real, not real in a sense they are not authentic then why they are so important. So let us go to the statement what UNESCO, UNESCO is uh, the highest authority which sort of declares the world hate is size and describes the reasons for that. So let us see that what sort of they have written in this uh, signage or the signboard that the importance of that site. So I am reading out during the Warsaw uprising in August 1944 more than 85% of Warsaw's historic center was destroyed by the Nazi troop. After the war, a five-year reconstruction campaign by its citizens resulted in today's meticulous restoration of the old town with its churches, palaces and marketplaces. It is an outstanding example of a near total reconstruction of a span of history covering 13 to 27 century. So almost seven seven centuries history have been recorded in that area which has been a near total reconstruction took place and that has been declared by UNESCO as the World Heritage Site. Now why? So we get two words in this context on the, the writer, one is the reconstruction and one is restoration. So there are certain differences between these two approaches. And uh, so reconstruction, we are getting uh, acquainted with some new terminologies, reconstruction, restoration and rehabilitation because the buildings, most of the buildings are no longer used as residential buildings, some definitely are, uh, but many of them are being used for public facilities and they have been rehabilitated as in some cases as a museum, in some cases such as cultural facilities, some cases as institutions, some cases as guest houses and some are still being used as the residential quarter. So this brings us to the question of the value and significance. So what was the value that why that reconstructed quarter of old Warsaw has been declared as a world heritage site? So again, I am quoting from UNESCO's write-up that the historic center of Warsaw is an exceptional example of the comprehensive reconstruction of a city that had been deliberately and totally destroyed. So it is an ex exceptional example of the comprehensive reconstruction. One, 
It also goes on further to say the foundation of the material reconstruction was the inner strength and determination of the nation which brought about the reconstruction of the heritage on a unique scale in the history of the world. So, let us look at this more carefully. It has been reconstructed entire quarter of a whole historic structure, but why what is the value and the significance is not only that they look beautiful, not only that they look like old structure, but they say the foundation of the material reconstruction which is a tangible expression or tangible product what we see today. It was the expression or manifestation of the inner strength and determination of the nation. So, this strength and determination of the nation, this is of value and this what we see today, it is a manifestation of the strength and determination of the nation by which they thought that it should be reconstructed. So, this intangible component of the significance, the value, the emotional attachment, the symbolism of that structure that intangible characteristics are important and that historic quarter we are, what we see today is a manifest manifestation of that value and significance and that is why they have been declared as a world heritage site. Let us go to another example. This is Coventry Cathedral in UK. Okay, we see that here uh, this is the Coventry, it is a town which was actually during the World War time, it was a center of the defense uh, storage and defense trading and it was uh, came under an attack. And this is the Coventry Cathedral, part of this is old and part of this is new. Let us uh, try to understand the story behind it, a story behind its reconstruction, remodeling or new construction. During the World War II in 14th November, on 14th November, so just almost today's, today's uh, yeah, almost uh, so many years have passed by that uh, 14th November 1940, the German uh, Air Force actually almost totally destructed the Coventry Cathedral. So, what could have been the approaches? Uh, which were available to the people, to the community and the government after the war was over. The alternative approaches which were available was they could have sweep, sweeping away the ruins, they could have cleared the places, uh, rebuilding of a replica of the former church, build a new cathedral or preserve the remains of the old cathedral. All of these approaches would have been possible and could have been a, a proper or appropriate approach which they could have taken. What they have done is they have kept the ruins like this. Today they have cleared the debris and the ruins are kept there and they have not built the roof and that really is a very challenging situation because over without the roof it is very difficult to uh, preserve the machinery structures. So, what they decided is that to build a new cathedral and preserve the remains of the old cathedral. So, they have preserved the old cathedral without the roof and at the same time they have built a new cathedral. The ruins of the older cathedral remain a hallowed ground and are listed as a grade 1. Listed as a grade 1 means they are very, very important almost at the highest grading in a country. Now, the question or the debate comes why instead of rebuilding the old cathedral, it is kept in ruins. In case of Warsaw, we, we have seen that they have reconstructed case by case, building by building, uh, facade by facade, the entire old structure. But in this case, they have not done that. They just cleared the ruins and cleared the debris and they have kept like that. Now, for that, we have to go back to that time. Uh, after that day when the damage took place, the next morning what we can see that the um, George the Sixth visit the site and uh, quoting from the Reverend Dick Howard who was in charge of that, he says that the cathedral will rise again and it will be as great as a pride to future generations as it has been to generation of the past. So, he is talking about the cathedral will rise again and what they did is that they took two uh, wooden beams from the ruins and they have put it as a cross and 
under that they have said father forgive. So, again we are coming to the debate that what has the approach has been taken for Coventry Cathedral preservation or conservation and why and what is the value. The value here basically a commemorative and historical they are trying to remember that particular incident the historically what it has happened, but not as a sign of hatred not as a negative aspect, but to keep it something which will re remind the people of the future generation that what a war can do and what is the degree or damage of a war. So, the ruins of the old cathedral are preserved as a memorial and a sacred space for the city. But in addition to that there has been a new cathedral which has been built an inspiration to many fine artists of the post war area because while the new cathedral was being built there were the stained glass, the, there were the uh, sculptures, there were murals and the artists from all over the world they sort of contributed to uh, create those artistic uh, features in the new, uh, new cathedral and this new cathedral was not an imitation of the old cathedral. It was totally new except the brick uh, that was uni uh, uniting the old and the new cathedral. Feature wise, element wise it was a totally new cathedral. They have not copied that any, any of the sort of features from the old cathedral. So, both the new and the old they were existing side by side. So, the Coventry cathedral becomes now a garden of remembrance. Designed by Basil Spence and Orup, the new cathedral is built alongside the two buildings together effectively forming one church. And so, it is a symbolic value, a symbolic value not only for a place uh, for a homage or a place for a religious uh, place, it has become a symbolic, it has attained a new value, symbolic value which is achieved by the dramatic con contrast of the ruins of the new cathedral a moving reminder of the foley and west of the war and a quest for peace and reconciliation and by this it has become a major tourist attraction. Preservation and new addition to the building these are also the alternative approaches which have been taken care in this uh, preservation or restoration approach of the Coventry Cathedral. So, these two examples bring us to the many phases of conservation. Preservation and conservation thus is a multifaceted term, it can have many dimensions and possibilities. Is conservation is actually a broad umbrella under which it can be conservation, it can be restoration, it can be reconstruction, it can be new building, it can be preservation, a lot of approaches which are possible under the broad head of conservation. <laughs> On the other hand, subjective assessment of the past, so preservation is a multifaceted, so we have talked about that. But on the other hand what is important to understand is the subjective assessment of the past often overrides the objectivity of seeing heritage as a potential and viable development option. So, between this subjective uh, assessment and the objectivity of seeing that what is possible, what are the value, this is a very important part of uh, conservation and to decide what can be done. As we have seen in these two cases there is almost a similar situation though the scale is very different uh, we can or can take a various different dimension or an approaches and paths and but still will be sort of quite right. Uh, to sort of take this approach. So, there is actually nothing right or wrong uh, that this has to be done under this situation. It depends a lot of assessment which also has to be objective. It cannot be subjective assessment because just saying that I like this building or I like this structure, I think I am very proud of this structure, so I would like to preserve that. So, this objective assessment is very important when we decide about the conservation movement. So, thus the conservation is a process, 
is a continuity of useful life in a durable fabric. It is very difficult to define conservation, but I think each and every this word, it is a linkage between the past, present and the future generation. And so that the fabric which is durable, it sort of serves an useful purpose for the future generation, the present generation and also becomes a link with our past generation, the heritage what we have uh, inherited from the past and so that we become a custodian and we can preserve it and keep it for the future generation and uh, sometimes we also can add value to that. So, the next question is the value. This is a very small uh, structure in West Midnapura village structure. Uh, which uh, sort of encompasses a lot of measures, it has been restored, it has been preserved and it is also a story of the community participation. So, probably sometimes we will talk about that in detail, uh, but we what we have to remember that conservation is a process, it is not we are not talking about a product only and it is actually a continuity a bridge between the past, present and the future generation and where the pre present generation acts as a custodian of the heritage which is of a value and significant so that we can pass it on to the future generation as a caretaker, as a custodian. This brings us to the question of the significance of heritage because we have seen that until and unless we do an objective assessment of the heritage and the cultural properties, uh, we cannot understand that why should we preserve and what is the purpose of preserving that. Let us take some of the examples like this one. This is an archaeological ruins somewhere, it can be anywhere and uh, which was there and the superstructure is no longer there and archaeologists have sort of uh, excavated and kept it in a preserved condition, maintained it well. Uh, this is the Konarok temple, Sun temple of Konarok. Uh, there are a few structures, uh, uh, two or three structures, huge structure, main structure. Uh, a particular structure, the main temple uh, got destroyed and few of the structures are still preserved and there is a lot of controversy that what can be done about that. They are beautiful sculptures and uh, it also is a world heritage site and is a very interesting example. So, when we talk about that where the first one is of architectural significance, what is the significance of Konarok temple? We have to assess that whether it is an aesthetic or historical or architecture or sculptural or scientific, uh, we have to see that. So, we even talk about the individual structure, we will talk about the detailed significant assessment. This is Shachi Stup, uh, which what we see Shachi Stup today, it is not like that, it is a restored structure. Uh, in the last century, I think 19th century, it has been restored and uh, from almost in a ruinous condition and it is a very good example of a restoration. And uh, then we come to a uh, Bodhi tree which is in Bodh Gaya. There is not much structure there, that there is a temple, but what is more important here is the Bodhi tree. The, what is the significance of the Bodhi tree not only for the pilgrims who come there, for the tourists come all there. So, it is the sacredness, the symbolic value of the tree, the place which is important and uh, that also is of significance like the gardens of Kashmir, they are definitely important for the landscape value, historical value, aesthetic value. So, there are various types of values and significance which can be attributed to a cultural property, site and a precinct. We will now see that this is Lothal in Gujarat, Konarak in Orissa, Shachi Sup in uh, Shachi and Bodhi tree in Bodhkaya and Mughal gardens in Kashmir. So, these are some of the examples where not only one type of significance or value, there can be a multiple significance and value, multiple aspects of a site and a precinct for which they are important and for which they are significant and for which they need to be preserved. Now, when we talk about the cultural significance, cultural significance derives from historical, architectural, scientific, social, technological, aesthetics or other specified value. So, these are the broad aspect under which we can categorize the values and significance of the world heritage site. Let us take some of the examples of the values and significance. This is Stonehenge in UK, a UNESCO world heritage site. The stone columns which are there 
uh, which uh, may be important uh, because of the sacredness. People think that there were some uh, rituals it is associated with and uh, they are standing there and it is almost all over the world people come to see that it is of a high significance from very old age. And but what we see today it actually again also partially restored it is not very authentic in that way, but authentically restored we can see uh, probably in some times we will talk about that how it has been restored. But today we are talking about now stone in Unico there are certain stones ok they are not being used now there is no functional use of these places and uh, there is also can be not necessarily wall can be old heritage sites there can be some insignificant sites for example this is the pioneer farm there can be some stones uh, which sort of a remembrance of some of the graveyard or the, the megalithic burial site in charkhan so there can be various types of on under the similar categories which can be very important for the cultural significance on that so, there are certain things here we have talked, uh, we here we see a lot of uh, sites, uh, Shachi Stoop or the classical sites or landscape areas or maybe sometimes the people who are there for important, uh, entire townscape which is there important. So, there are emotional values under different categories, cultural values under different categories and associational values under different categories. So, there also can be a uh, uh, very objective assessment to find out that what are the different significance and value of the site. So, to summarize what we have discussed today, uh, we have talked about the heritage conservation needs uh, as a lot of deep debate and purpose. Now, we have to uh, address those challenges and issues we have to understand that and uh, basically it deals with why should we conserve, what should we conserve and how should we conserve. These are very interrelated terms and aspects. Um, we also have to take, uh, talked about two case studies where the divergent approaches of conservation have been talked about in two case studies and uh, we also have talked about that conservation is a process and it is a continuity of useful life in a durable fabric. Uh, we are the present generation is a custodian of the uh, heritage of it, whatever it is significant and in that context we are talking about the significance of heritage which needs an objective assessment. So, in the next uh, module we will talk in detail about the significance of heritage, the different types of value, the value assessment, how it can be objectively done. Thank you.